And if you want to talk about this is you know what the whole point of this yeah is we don't structure it in it. This mm-hmm. is not supposed to be structured and this is what we're going to talk about and whatever because when things are structured there's no space for like random mm-hmm. emerging things to come out in it. All right. So that's the most important thing but but to start it off I think for me like a lot of people might not even know that you've been a big role model in my life for like the last I would say like 10 11 years. Um just when I started doing my time man and I remember that like, some of the stuff I learned from you as well, like most importantly was mindset. Mm-hmm. And I realized even this morning, we're training this morning, yeah. And obviously Gabriel was getting ready for his fight. And then I was seeing him like go through all these rounds with people, yeah. And I realized actually it's not even a physical thing. It's just a mindset thing, yes, whether he's going to get up or not. And that's what I learned. I learned that even in life, the way we train in gym, it's mm-hmm. like if you transfer that to the way we live life, little extra thing here yeah. and there and whatever, then you can change, you can change everything. For man. sure, for sure. You know um, what I'm saying? That's something that I learned myself and that's why I'm able to find a way to incorporate into the training and help mm. other people to see it just because of how I managed to turn, not even like turn my life around, but was able to pick up so many things from training and relate it to real life and realise, you know, that you learn so much about yourself from your training when you're going well, you know, when you go through setbacks, losses, or you get, you know, even just getting beat up in the gym or when you're tired, mm. just so you know, you learn so much about yourself. And then, as I said, you can just find a way to bring that into your, into your everyday life, which is one of the main benefits, one of the main benefits of mm. learning a martial art more than the physical or learning how to fight is learning about yourself. Yeah. That's, that's something that's important. So that's what I was going to ask you. And I was going to ask you, like, for me, obviously, I know where I picked up some of my mindset, which is from you. I was going to ask you, where did you get yours? How did you build yours? Like, what was your sort of journey to building it? Um, for me, I learned a lot from, firstly, was from my dad um, as a role model in terms of seeing what a hard worker is, seeing someone that, you know, would wake up at six o'clock every single morning, mm. um, would work hard, would, would do overtime on the weekends as well and someone that you know would always do more for his family and was always there for his family someone that never looked and saw the bad in people he would always see the positive even when I didn't want him to see the positive or I didn't see it, he would always mm. see the positive in people and that's something I learned from him just in terms of being you know that that hard work and that upstanding kind of mindset and just flying flying straight um, and then after that would be my coach, um, Arjan Vinny. I've learned so much from him as a person, as a fighter, as a as a coach myself. Um, just on the mindset of being a person, the mindset of being a man, mindset of being a black man in London, being a fighter, being a coach. I've just learned so much from him. Um, yeah, you know, without those two people in my life, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be who I am or, or where I am today. Um, so yeah, that, those are my biggest role models. And even when I still see him now, you know, I met up with with Arjun Vinny a couple of weeks ago, mm. you know, just to sit and reason with him and talk with him about things that are going on, and even just you know just having a conversation with him, he kind of just brought me back down to reality again. Um, you know, things that I'm doing in my life, things that I shouldn't be doing. Um, it's yeah, and that connections for life anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, when you like with, with me and Arjun, it's it's at the point where when you're with a trainer. Because you train so much with them, you're used to hearing their voice like programmed in your head so much. Mm. Like I could hear his voice over a crowd of people and recognize, oh, that's his voice. Like whatever he's saying to me, like it, it's programmed into my subconscious just to act on it without even thinking yeah. anything about it. Just because you know we've got such a connection just yeah. built up over over the years. So, I yeah. remember my first Muay Thai fight, and obviously there was loads of people like shouting and screaming and stuff. The only worst I could hear was your voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only worst I was concentrating yeah. on. Ev- everything else just disappeared. Yeah. And I'm just, I was concentrating on my opponent and your worst. That's all I could hear. Yeah. So, so see with coaching, because you coach a lot of people, yeah. What would you say is like the most common kind of like thing or attitude that people have when it comes to like my entire combat sports or training in general, just kind of like going through the tough phase and like what sort of stuff have you seen? Yeah. I think for me, the, the, the most, the most common thing you see in people is, and this is natural, is something where people don't, I've, they don't fully believe in themselves. They don't 100% know what their capabilities are, which I understand is natural because if you haven't pushed yourself to certain limits, you're not going to know how far you can go. Mm. So for me, is trying to get people to realise and understand they've always got more in the tank. They've always, no matter whether they think, you know, they can't do another press-up or they can't spar with another person or they can't run another 20 seconds or whatever it is, 
It's just to show people that there's always more. I mean, that's what people learn once they come and train with me that, you know, they always thought to themselves, right, oh, I could, you know, I, I thought I, w- I would try Muay Thai or try this or do some running with you guys. And I thought I could only get to, the, you know, so far. But, you know, when they train with us and they see you or they see other people that they train, you know, Kido or Kingsley and this and that, right, oh, if he can do that, that means I should be able to do a bit more. Or I didn't think I could do any more, but, you know, you managed to pick me up and when I didn't want to do it, I wanted to quit. I wanted to get out of the ring. But, you know, you picked me up and, and got me to do more. And then I've realised, wow, there's actually more I can do. There's always more. Mm. I mean, that's one of the main things I've, I've realised with lots of people. And as I said, it's natural. Unless you push yourself to your absolute limit all the time, you're not going to know how far you can go. Yeah, for real. Like, even this morning, I was training. And and I think for me, like, physically, I checked out time ago. Because, obviously, I'm not in my best shape right now, like, combat sports-wise. So I checked out time ago. And there was the guy I was training with, Danny, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And he kept saying, like, yo, bro, it's like you're faster than everyone else. Like, you're doing your thing and he's just gassing it up here. But I was thinking, like, it's funny because, like, his sort of, like, mindset outlook was just that I'm competing against everyone else. But I was thinking, I'm actually competing with myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was there, I'm like, I'm not even competing with those people. I'm not even mm-hmm. looking at other people's, yeah. like, what they're doing, how fast they're running. Mm-hmm. And I was well, just that, like, I need good. to beat myself. That's, that's good. And I think that comes from, with you, your experience. Mm. Of, of training of competing and fighting you know the biggest battle is yourself as much as you know you try and tag along with your training partners and try and better them you always know you know the hardest thing is 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 defeating your 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 nerves defeating mm. your fears you know defeating your laziness when you know you don't want to do it you don't want to get up but you know you've got to do it that's the biggest battle yeah it, do, do you know you know what's funny yeah i just remembered another thing yeah i think this was like two years ago roughly like two before covid prior to covid I remember I was coming into into the gym and I haven't trained for a while. And it was like, when you come in training, when you come in training, yeah. So I was telling you, I was like, hey, you know what? T- tomorrow I'm turning up. I didn't even know he was recording me at that time. So I was like, yeah, I'm coming tomorrow. I'm going to be there. And a the long story short, yeah. I had to go to I hospital I with a young person. Yeah. I? yeah. And I think it was around four in the morning. And I made a video. Let me take this. Yeah. And I made a video, yeah. Send, I send it to you personally because I thought, you know what? Because this guy's gonna think I'm just like on his joke thing again. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna turn up again. So I thought, you know what? He might understand yeah. that it wasn't an excuse. He might understand that there's a reason for why I'm not coming tomorrow. Yeah, because it's like four in the morning, I haven't slept yet. So I was like, yo, Daniel, I'm not coming tomorrow because I had to go to hospital, or whatever. Then you went and put those videos together, yeah. Ever, yeah? I put it into a little collage, and, and you put it in a group shot. Yeah. That was hilarious, bro. Yeah. I was like, this guy is funny, man. But like, yeah. but like on that note as well, yeah, like how far do you think or do you separate like excuses with reasons? Like, because obviously sometimes there's a reason, there's, there's an excuse. The only time that you'd say that there's a justifiable reason is if, if it's outside of your control. Mm. You know, if there's something you can't physically get to the gym, you know, there's nothing you can do about it, then fair enough. You know, mm. or you do have, you know, God forbid, things that go wrong, family, house, jobs, stuff like that can, can stop you. But even with those particular things, you know, you can always find a way. Mm. And when, when you've got the mindset of there's always a way, you know, then at that point you realise anything else you're saying after that is an excuse. You know, mm. when, when someone really wants, as the saying goes, you know, when you want to, people who want to, they find a way. People who don't, they find an excuse. Yeah. So as much as you might say, no, no, I've got a good reason, it's this and that, you know, whatever it is, it's still an excuse. Because if you really wanted to be there, or do whatever it was, you would do it. You'd mm. find a way. Somehow, you'd find a way. Even with no money in your pocket, even if you had to walk 20 miles to get wherever mm. it is you're going, you would find a way. So there's always a way. So ultimately, an excuse is just an excuse. Yeah. And then sometimes it's, there's a lack of perspective. But with yeah. what you just said, yeah, let me just add to this as well. Also, what's the score, by the way? Is it still 5-1? Still now 5. Is it in a 5-0? No. It's a little video. So... So yeah, basically, based on what you just said, yeah, Go on. based on what you just said, like I've, I've, I was reading to, I've, I was listening to a book, not reading, I was listening to a book this morning. Which one? Yeah. Um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Wicked. Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 he said his thing in there, yeah, he said, uh, failure inspires winners and defeats losers. That's right. And I was, I, I basically, right. I was thinking about you when I heard that. Mm-hmm. And, and I was thinking like, like, just in general, like in Muay Thai and, and in combat sports that we do, yeah, it's like, yeah. I always see people that ain't going to come back. Yeah. I see people walk in there and I'm thinking, obviously it's like failure or slash adversity. And I see that they come there and I'm like, they don't want to change or they don't want to, because if you can't, if you can't, 
do a Muay Thai session, it's like how how is someone meant to like make other changes in their life? True. You know what I'm trying to say? So they'll just be losers. And I'm not saying they're gonna be losers for their whole life. Because mm. I think through conversation and other things, people can change the mindset. Like for instance, when I start coming, like I, I didn't have this mindset. It took me, it was like a journey, you know. Mm. And one of the things I remember used to say, yeah, that used to always like make me like feel empowered. You used to say, like, you know, when we used to train here yeah, and then people go. Like, oh, I'm tired, I can't do no more. And you go like, but if it was on the streets and then someone's trying to rob you or trying to do something, it's like, you're going to go, I'm tired, like I can't do no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when you used to hit me. I used to be like, I can't do more. Like, it's you not. Find a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, find there's a, way. a way. Yeah. You know, I used to use the line of exactly what you said. It's either when, you know, you leave the gym and someone tries to rob you on the way home. You know, you've got options. You're either going to run or you've got to fight mm. or you're going to cower up and die. But, you mm. know, the ultimate thing is, is, is live or die. And when it's that kind of scenario, you'll find the energy, you'll find a bit more anger or aggression or whatever it is. This, the other analogy I give is if you open your front door on the way home and there's an intruder in your house, you know, you're either going to run away, scream, cower and hide, or you're going to fight. But if you do then decide to fight, you're going to fight with, you know, the kind of aggression that people are going to think, right, this guy's a wild yeah. animal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so there is, you know, there is ways of finding it. But also touching back on what you said about um, the different, you know, the mindset of losing and, and winning and, and those people that um, a failure would set them back or set them mm. off. You know, I wouldn't say that they're def- necessarily losers, but you do get that, you know, that winner mentality where a setback motivates them to do more. Mm. Whereas, you know, if you don't have that mindset, the setback might motivate you to quit, to, to give in, to, to not even, you know, not even attempt it again. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it goes even deeper than that. You know, you'll see certain fighters that once the fight's over, They'll lose the fight, you know, the other guy will get the decision and they'll come out of the ring happy or, you know, like, not excited, but they'll come out happy, pleased with themselves and they, you know, be high-fiving and getting congratulations from people and you think to yourself, but you just lost the fight. Mm. Whereas you'll get other people will come out of the ring and I've seen them, you know, Kingsley, Ronaldo, even myself and you can see it in their, in their whole body, their energy. They're heartbroken. You know, they're, they're completely distraught. They don't want to talk to no one or... Oh, they're in tears. I've, you know, I've seen fighters come out of the ring and, and they're in tears. Mm. And that, for me, is a winner. You know, like there was another picture when people was mocking um, Daniel Cormier when he lost against uh, John Jones. And he was there with his face, you know, full of tears and everyone's mocking him. Oh, you know, look, he's a loser. Look, he lost his fight and he's crying. And it's like, no, that's the mentality mm. of a winner. A winner gets upset when they lose. A loser is happy to lose. Mm. Or they don't mind if they lose, you know, oh, I don't mind, you know, I'll give it, give it my best and whether they win or lose, they're happy. No, a winner's mentality, they're pissed off if they lose, excuse my language. They're not happy unless they've done the most that they can do and they know the mm. most that they can do is winning or the most that they can do is performing well as they win. And if, they're not, if they haven't done that, they're not happy. And that's the mm. mindset of someone that you know is a winner. You know, if, they, if they're not giving 100% or they don't achieve what it is they want, they're not happy. They're back to the drawing board. They want to do more. They want, what can I work on? What can I make different? Because they know they've set a bar for themselves that's up there. They're not happy with silver medal. They're not happy with bronze medal. They're not happy with people mm-hmm. coming up to them and like, yeah, you done well. You know, it was a really good fight. You know, you, it, was, you know it, was, it was close, but don't worry about it. Keep your head up. No, they're mm-hmm. pissed off because what they came for was the win. And that's the mindset of, of, the, of, of a winner. It's funny you said that because I feel like in schools nowadays, what they do, it's like, regardless of what place someone's finished, mm. like they'll go, like they'll still get a medal or something, yeah, or they'll yeah. get something. It's, it's all right, don't worry, you came ninth. Yeah. It's cool, like it's yeah. all good. And it's just like, and it's, it's, it's almost like there's like a sense of like toxic positivity. It's like, don't worry about it. Yeah, it is. It's all good. For but me, no, it is. no one really goes, like, no one's there to uplift the other person and go, yeah. you know what? Like, you can do better. Like, mm. why don't you go back and try this again or something else? And, and I think that's that's where. Like, people need people that will kind of, like, serve them in that sort of thing. Like, you know, just someone, like, rather than just let them down, it's just like, Mm. like, what kind of friend am I to tell someone, like, yeah, you've done well and whatever. That's, I I don't think that works, man. No, I hear you. I I hear that. And I agree, completely agree, you know, like, all these um, participation medals, you know, you get get a medal just for competing. Like, for me, that's not how it runs. If you're there to, you know, you're there, you train hard and you're in competition with yourself, but then you're also in competition with the other people that's either in the race or in the match. So, you know, you don't, for example, you don't win a gold medal. You don't mm. win a bronze medal, but you'll get athletes who come back from the Olympics happy and they're like, yeah, I won a bronze medal. You didn't win a bronze medal. You lost gold. Mm. That's what you should have been there for. You're not, you shouldn't be there happy with your silver medal because that's the first loser or the first runner up. You don't want to be classifying yourself as the first loser. You know, you should be having that mindset of I win gold or there's nothing else. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's what, you know, that's it has changed with society now. As, as you said, you know, everyone's in there. You get a medal for coming second. It's the same medal for coming eighth. 
And then where's the competitiveness? Where's the mm. challenge? Where's the... It's not there anymore. But with that also, there's, there's a sense of like... Freedom of speech is kind of going away with that. It's like, can't say certain things to someone, mm. can get cancelled, and yeah, yeah. it's just all of these bunch of different things, and it's like... And the political correctness. But even yeah. in, even in terms of that, no winning, no losing, this is why I don't like training fighters to go into interclubs. Because mm. in interclub, at the end of the day, you know, you raise both fighters' hands, and both of them come out as, as a winner or a loser. Mm. But for me, that doesn't train the right mindset that you want to have as a fighter. As a fighter, you have to have that mindset going into the ring, I'm the best. And mm. I'm coming out as number one. You don't go into a fight thinking, okay, I'm going to go in and draw. Or we're both going to win or we're both going to lose. If that's what your mindset is, you're in the wrong game. Mm. You are in the wrong sport. Anything where it's one-on-one, -on -one, a game of tennis, table tennis, whatever it is, a fight. When it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's you versus one person. Mm. There's one person wins, one person loses. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And you know what, actually, I think, I think you're the person who has the most empowering mindset when it comes to that. Because I remember he was telling me one time, he said, even though this is an interclub, you said there's still winners and losers. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. it's yeah. not. It's just not. Yeah, in yourself, like, ev you everyone know. knows you won. Who yeah, lost? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in yeah. yourself, you know. Like obviously, everyone watching can see. Right, that guy got beat up. Okay, yeah, he got his hand raised. You know, they're both winners. <laughs> but you know, when when you get beat up, you know if you feel embarrassed because you know you got knocked over, punched up, kneed up, mm. kicked up, all the rest of it. You know. So there's no point trying to kid it and fool people into no, you done really well. Why would you give a medal? <laughs> Why would you give a medal to someone who come last in the in a race? There's nine people in the race. You wouldn't give a medal to the person who came ninth to, to kind of empower him to be like, oh, you done well. Yeah. You didn't do well. You came last. And that's because the person was first to come last. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> you know, you can motivate them yeah. and be like, you know, you can do better next time. But there's no congratulating on mm. just being in there for the sake of being in there. It's, yeah, yeah. I, it defeats I, 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 the object. I would probably quit after that and just start doing some other shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You get lots of people out there that do. You know, they have one fight or a few fights and they have, you know, one bad loss. And um, because they don't want to face that that again, they don't want to face the embarrassment of it or the disappointment of losing or, you know, they, they pushed themselves as far as far as they thought they could mm -hmm. do. Didn't get the win. And so, you know, they quit. They, they don't do it again. They, you know, they... And there's people from Fight for Peace that have done it. They go on and do other sports. And I'm happy for them if they want to do other things. But if you want to be a fighter, you have to be resilient. And that's something yeah. that I think my coach, Arjun Vinny, said to me that I've always shown or always had is a sense of resilience to mm. come back because I've had some bad losses I've had certain losses that I've afterwards come out the ring and sat in the changing room and thought to myself Ra Daniel are you are you good at this like you're actually not you're like do you really want to do this mm. again because that performance was crap like mm. you're not actually good you know but then you have to find something in yourself to be like no I had an off night there's things I didn't do right in my training I can do this better and you pick yourself up and go mm. again but right. you know what, speaking of training as well, like, so this is my assumption. I wanted to hear what your thoughts are on it. I feel like most people, or like, to be honest, like, every single person that's, that's fighting, <coughs> they either win or lose the fight within the, tr like, through the training. I think, yeah, I think yeah. that that happens through the, whatever the training camp is. And obviously, sometimes, like, both fighters can have a really good training camp, and then obviously, you'll see who's the best in, in that performance. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I feel like sometimes some people, the way they train and, and the way they're getting ready for the fight, they just I will win or lose before that. Yeah, definitely. That's that's exactly where the fight's won and lost. You know, you get people say when they're when they're watching a the fight, oh he won, it was a lucky punch, he did this. And like there's no such thing as a lucky punch or kick. Mm. When you've trained for hours and hours, weeks and weeks and weeks to throw a particular technique, mm. there's nothing lucky about it. You know, you've put that work in. When you've done a repetition of a technique a thousand times, you can't then say if you do it in a fight, there's it's lucky. There's nothing luck about mm. it. You've drilled it, drilled it, drilled it. So, you know, back on what you're saying, that's that's where the fight's yeah, won. Yeah. You know, it's not once you're in, actually in the ring, that's when you get to enjoy. That's when you should get to enjoy it. You know, you've put all the hard work in, you've done the diet, and you've done the hard sparring, the running, getting up when you don't want to do so. Mm. Um, that's where you enjoy it. But during the training, that's where between you and your opponent, whoever's putting in the extra work, they're getting that little bit sharper, that little bit stronger, that little bit fitter. And that's where they're winning the fight. So come fight time, they've already done the hard work. Long mm. time, long time. And that's why you go into the fight. Once you've done all that hard work, you go into the fight with so much confidence because you know your opponent either hasn't done as much as you, he hasn't trained as hard as you, and you've already won it in yeah, your yeah. mindset. You're only going into the ring to, you know, to perform what you know you can do mm. and, and collect you know, your hand in the air, collect the belt or the medal or whatever it is, but you already know you've already won that fight and that's the mindset you have to go into the mm. ring with. I'm that's already the winner. That's the performance bit. You know what, yeah, what do you think about that Bad Ahari fight, the last one? Because I can't lie, that one hurt me, man. Yeah, it did for me as well because yeah. I'm a big fan. He's my favourite um, heavyweight uh, kickboxer. You was know, that one, that one kick is just like... It, it was, it was. But it wasn't, there was nothing luck about it. Mm. And... 
his opponent, if if Bada was more, not to say more clued up or was more thinking defensively, because at that moment he, you know, he was smashing. Um, who did he fight? Was it Pot- uh, what's the guy's name? That Polish guy. I forgot yeah, his yeah. name. I forgot his name. But he was smashing him, knocked him down a couple of times. But what the Polish guy had showed him was that kick. He'd done it twice before. Mm. Both times, Bada blocked it. So he should have been aware, okay, no matter how hurt this guy is, mm. he's always got the ability to throw out that head kick. Mm-mm. So he, once he's shown it to him twice, for him to um, get caught with it for the third time afterwards mm. and, and knock out like that, it was spectacular, but it was on the cards. But do you think do you think that was like a level of arrogance and just overconfidence? And this is this is why I always say, you know, sometimes being overconfident is not a good thing. Mm-hmm. Because then because what happens that like people don't not not just in the ring, just in life in general, people don't assess the situation properly yeah. as they should because they're overconfident, like, yeah, like this and that, and then they don't take in certain details into account. Yeah. That that could, you know. Definitely, definitely. I wouldn't say it's overconfidence. You can't get overconfident, but you can get blindly confident mm. or negligent confidence where you're so confident you're not as you said you know you're not thinking of dangers mm. you're so um forward thinking on what i'm gonna do i'm winning this i'm gonna do x y and z that you're not even thinking wait there's a possibility that he might land this or he mm. might throw this or this person might be able to run faster than me so yeah. uh, it's not so much overconfident but it's 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 blind blind confidence where mm. you're closing your eyes to other things to actual reality and the dangers that could happen yeah but confidence you know, when I say like, when, so when I say that you can't be overconfident because you can't get to a stage where you think too highly of yourself, mm. it only becomes blind confidence where you're now not looking at your opponent. You can always gas yourself up as much as possible. I'm the best. You know, you keep telling yourself I'm mm. the best. You could get knocked over with your eyes swollen, blood pouring out your mouth, and you're still <laughs> telling yourself I'm the best. That's not overconfident. <laughs> like yeah, you need to, but you have to. You have to be able to do that yeah. when you're, when you're at your worst. You still have to be able to say to yourself. I'm the best person. I'm the best fighter in the room, even when you're on the floor. Because as you're picking yourself up, you're gonna have to show it. Mm, that's but it's, powerful. Yeah, but it's not blind confidence to the point where you know I'm the best. I don't even need to keep my hands up. That's when it becomes blind confidence because you're not thinking to yourself on your on on your opponent. What mm. can your opponent do? Your opponent can still do X, Y, and Z and knock you out. Yeah, yeah. And and, and speaking of books, yeah, I'm gonna bring it back a little bit. Um, I know you read. Oh, I, yeah. don't, I don't know how often you read now. I do, I still I, read a lot. I, I still read, read a lot. I listen, I listen to a lot more audio books than I do, just for time-wise, because I don't have time to be It's sitting. convenient, isn't it? You can yeah, drive yeah. And I can, just, yeah, put them yeah. on in the car, and I do a lot of driving, so I just play them. I actually play them at double speed, so I get through them a little bit quicker as well. So. <laughs> double speed as well, yeah. you know. I, I can't do double speed yet. I'm, I'm still trying to, like, concentrate on, on, on everything the person's saying. But um, speaking of books, yeah, what would you say, like, what's your, like, two books... What what two books kind of changed your life a bit or gave you a different perspective on something? Think and Grow Rich, mm. definitely by Napoleon Hill. That's a book that I've li- sorry, that's a book that I've read and listened to about five or six times. And every time you read it, or, or you know, you read different parts of it, and something might stand out to you that I didn't that you didn't think of before. And, and is that and and obviously like at the same time, I feel like you're probably in a different place as well in life. So like you know, sometimes you can read the same thing, but yeah. depending on where you're yeah, at, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, with the individual, yeah, yeah. That's why it's it's good to read them again and again. Um, that book changed my life, and there's another book called African Holistic Health, mm. um, which just gives it's almost like a. A reference book. It's not so much a book that you read once. It's more like a reference book, and it just gives tips and advice on things that will help the body. Um, you know how to get rid of you know dry skin, how to get rid of certain diseases, illnesses, what foods to take, what food not to take, and it's something you can refer to um, again and again. Mm. Um, that's another book that, that's helped a lot. Um, but in terms of motivation for me right now, it's not even a book. It's a guy called Eric Thomas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Eric Thomas, ET, the hip hop, um, hip hop preacher. That's that's a guy that gets me going um, every morning or every evening. I try and put on one of his one of his tapes because you know he'll always drop something that will have me thinking more productive and mm. have me thinking, yeah, the way that you know the way that I should be if I want to be doing things and I said just being more productive. Yeah, but then you, you think like when you listen to him, you just connect with like basically just with another the same part that you got within, within yourself, which is yeah. about you know like motivation and just pushing forward and and yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I think for me, like I think you have to be like one of the most motivated people I've met. Yeah, and yeah, just resilient. The well. way when you listen to his story, he's had you know so many setbacks. He started from you know he didn't start from the best place, but he's managed to pull himself up and push himself on, and he's now helping others do the same. You know mm-hmm. so. When you see people that have managed to pull themselves up from, from, you know, from a position that was, um, that you may say was 
lower than you or he was further away from his goal than, than, than I was, it motivates me to know that, okay, if this person can do it from here, then I can do it from where I am. Mm. You know, there's there's no nothing that can stop me doing it if others can do it and they've been able to do so. There's something within them. They made a shift. They made a change mm. that I can do the same. Mm. Yeah. Cool, man. And and <coughs> in terms of like, kind of just talking about like humanity in general and all of that stuff. Like, what do you think people like the most at the moment? Self confidence. Mm. Um, I think the society is difficult because society has been so beat down with, you know, lockdowns, COVID, the whole stress is going around with food crisis, energy crisis. You know, everyone's been bombarded a lot. Um, and I think something that, that we start to lose is the confidence to think for ourselves. You know, a lot of people are just very, very reliant on the government, on the media, on the 5 p.m. press conferences to listen to what the health secretary's got to come out and say in terms of, you know, what we need to do, what's going to make us safe, <laughs> yeah. rather than being able to think for themselves and actually weigh up information for themselves and just have their own critical thinking. Do, think. do, do you know how I would phrase that, yeah? And this this another thing I want to talk to you about as well is responsibility. So just the ability to respond to certain yeah. things. And every single person's got responsibility. Mm. I know that sometimes, like, I feel like most people just go, you know what, I don't want to have any responsibility for my own life. And they just go like, you know what, it's the media, yeah, it's, the, it's government. the government, yeah, it's yeah. the this, it's what, the that. What, what should I do? Tell me yeah, what to do. Yeah, and, 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 and I think, and again, like, just going back to another, like, positive trait that you got and I picked up from you is, like, it's all about like just taking charge of my own life and just going, you know what, I'm responsible for certain things. Yeah. Even when I think I don't have no responsibility. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm trying to say? Because I feel like sometimes just thinking outside the box, there's so many different things I can do. Mm. Um, for instance, like if, if even if it doesn't affect me, like for example, let's say there's like loads of homeless people here and got food, right? I can I can deny responsibility and go, you know what, um, it's the government's fault, blah, blah, whatever. I can just go, you know what, let me go cook some meals mm. and go give some meals out to homeless people. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So that's what responsibility, yeah, taking sure. responsibility looks like. And I just feel like there's so many people who just sit there and hope and wait and, mm. and whatever rather than just trying to do something. Yeah, it is. And, it, and it's not even, it's, it's more than just like what you're saying about looking outside and seeing what people outside can do in terms of needing help. There's a lot of people that don't even take the responsibility for themselves. For mm -hmm. example, like um, people in their own health, you know, they won't, they don't actually take accountability for the fact of they look how they are because of what they do mm -hmm. or their health is what it is because of what they eat. You know, they'll leave it down to, oh, the government should know, you know, if this thing wasn't bad for me, the government would make it banned or they wouldn't tell us to eat or they wouldn't give it to children in school. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, but the reality is, you know, if you read the labels on what's in the food and you, you know, if you study, it doesn't, it's not, it's not rocket science. You know, we live in the age of information now where any answer is three clicks away on your phone. You can get the answer to any question. Just so like there's that. No, yeah. So there's no reason for ignorance. There's no reason that people shouldn't know what healthy food is, for example, or they shouldn't know what to do with their money in terms of investments worth, you know, savings or what to not waste it on and spend it on. So when you're seeing people that are in a, in a state where they're like, oh, I don't know what to do or I just rely on the government on, you know, it, it's, it stems from people being lazy mm. and just not take, as you said, not taking responsibility for themselves. Mm. And do you yeah. think, do you think education has got anything to do with it? Because yeah, I feel like, I feel like sometimes, and I'm not talking about like school education, I'm talking about like self-education, you know, like mm. reading and, and just like researching stuff. And mm. I feel like sometimes like people might not take responsibility because they don't know better or yeah. I think, yeah, 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 for sure. But then you said it's, it doesn't, you don't want to say about school education, but that's, that is something that helps or, in, or on, on the flip side hurts because when we're in school, we're not taught what we need to know mm. and we're not also taught how to learn. All we're taught is what information to know to regurgitate when the test comes. So that's not actual learning. All you're doing is memorizing certain information, certain facts and certain knowledge, general knowledge. And then when the test comes, you're able to just regurgitate it back onto paper. That's not actually learning anything. Yeah, it doesn't measure the intelligence at all. It's exactly. Just and just testing the memory. Yeah, so, you know, when you're taught that from, you know, years one to year 11 or 11 or 12 years of learning like that, you know, you get to a certain stage where you then think to yourself, after doing that, that education finished there. And most people think to themselves when they leave school or college, they, they stop learning. Whereas if you're more clued up, you'll understand that you keep learning every day of your life. Mm. Every day of your life, if you're aware of it, you learn something new. I realise it all the time. When you've, you know, If you've got kids, your kids will teach you something new every day. When you're driving around, you learn something new about a new way to get home or a new way to do something or something you never realise. You learn all the time. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, from 
you know, from school days or from our parents, that's something we should um, definitely know. Just how to how to learn about ourselves, how to study ourselves. Once you can do that, you can read any book because we are the yeah. we are the we are the greatest book out there. We are the greatest source of information is ourselves. But if you're not clued up to it, you're not going to know how to read it. Yeah, and I mean the books sense. are written by other people like, yeah. that spoke to other people, so it's yeah. just it's just passing on information it's just, it's, it's through information. their own perspective. Yeah, it's information yeah, yeah. on their experiences from their mind. You know, we've got that. Set, sorry, we've got that same information as well all within us. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just a case of tapping into it. Yeah, yeah. But are you spatially aware? Um, <laughs> I, yeah. No, I just asked this now. Are you spatially aware? You know why, yeah? Because like, sometimes I just feel like you just don't care about anything. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> no, I do. I do to a certain extent. Yeah. But, you know, we within, within myself, I try, not say I don't care, but to have too much care is, it inhibits people. Mm. You know, if you care too much about what people think or what people are going to say, it makes people stop doing stuff. Mm. If, if every time, you know, I'm, I'm going to be worried what Aladdin's going to think of me or he might laugh or he might do this, or whatever it is, it's going to make you, you know, less um, less wanting to take action or to do new things. So you have to, to a certain extent, not care what people think, because you're always going to get people that support you, always going to get people that knock you down and tell you you can't do this or that was rubbish, always. Mm. If you listen to all the naysayers, you're not going to do anything in life. Mm. So I, I don't want it to come across like I don't give a shit, but no, no, in, no. Order, in order to do things, you have to not care. Yeah, because do you know what it is? I'm also trying to discover like a balance in life, yeah, where... And I guess, like like you said, like it, it's different for everyone. But there's there's a thing of like people. A lot of people talk about like masculinity and femininity and all of that stuff. And and there's this whole thing going on with like m just men in general in mm. life saying that men don't talk about stuff enough and so on, so on. So I'm I'm trying to understand my own balance of like at what point they go like kind of like fuck everything and it just I use that sort of energy just say fuck it. Mm. And at what point they go you know what th this is an actual issue for me or I need to address this or I need to address that. So I feel like it's it's a I'm getting there, but I feel like it's a journey in itself. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's it's always going to be a journey. Mm. I think for me personally, um, I'm at the stage where I'll be thinking, if I want to do something, and it's not harming anyone or it's not hurting anyone, fuck it, then do it. Mm. You know, if, as long as it's not hurting you, it's not causing anyone in you know pain, loss, or distress, then there's no reason why not mm. to. If that's something you want to do and it's going to make you happy to do it. Do so. Do you, know, do, you know, do you know what's funny? Yeah, I feel like some maybe sometimes at certain points because I know you quite well. Yeah, and I feel like sometimes you're misunderstood by other people. Sometimes I'm always misunderstood. Yeah. Okay, always misunderstood. <laughs> but I think, but I think, maybe, you know what? Maybe part of the reason of that is because like they see you living your life in a in a free kind of like I don't really care what people think, mm. and they might be hating on that. They might just be like, you know what? Why can't I be like that? Or why yeah. this and that? And and I think it goes back to that thing of like people are so attached to what other people think that for them it's not even realistic. Yeah. I can't do that. I can't do this. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Bro, yeah it's like, funny. I see that all the time. Yeah. People put like ceilings on top of themselves, um, limits as to, you know, where they can get to. And once once you put a limit on themselves, you know, have you heard the analogy about the, the elephant? The way that they train an elephant when it's a baby. So the way that they train an elephant when it's a baby, they'll put, um, tie the rope around its neck and tie it to a spike in the floor. And obviously that baby elephant won't be strong enough to, to move the spike. Mm. So it will condition itself and put a limit on its mindset of I, that rope, I can't get that rope and that, that pole out the floor. But when the elephant turns into a fully grown adult, the elephant's eight tons. An elephant at eight tons will very easily turn its neck and rip that pole out the floor. Yeah. But because it's put that own ceiling, that own limit on its head of I can't get it out, it won't even try. It won't even try to do so. And that's the same thing that people have. You know, once you have that, you put that limit on from when you're young, there's certain limitations. That, okay, I can't run at a certain speed or I can't learn this. I can't read two books, this, or I can't multitask. And it's once you put that limit on, is one, it's very hard to break, but it's so damaging to the person because the easiest way to defeat someone is, is to get them to defeat themselves. And if they're already putting those limits on themselves, I can't do this, I can't, it's easy. It's a, it's, it's a belief they created as well. Yeah. Do you know, do you know how I describe that? Yeah, and, and what you just said is super powerful. I feel like people put themselves in prisons. It, it's the same thing you're mm. talking about, where they put themselves yeah, in their definitely. own. They create their own prison. It's not even some. No, it's not even someone else's prison. They create their own prison and they mm. s and they sit in those prisons. It's crazy, yeah. man. And then when you're in there, you know, it's comfort. The, the, the mind will find a way to be comfortable in that prison. And the minute you, you take them out of that comfort zone, you know, if your comfort is, for example, in pad work or training. Or on the bag, you know, you're doing three minutes and your limitation, your mental limitation is I can only do two rounds. It doesn't matter what happens when I do two, more than two rounds, I'm going to get tired. I can't do this. So when you get to two rounds, instantly you're going to, you're going to, you know, you're going to know what your limit is 
and you're going to subconsciously start to make yourself feel tired. You're going to start to make yourself not want to do it and mm. feel weaker just because of that's what your limitation is and the, the mind is so powerful, you'll make that a reality. And, you know, the same way outside of training, when you've got limits on how much you can earn or what you can do, where you can travel to, once you put those limits on yourself, you're never going to branch out of them mm. until you smash until you smash those limits. And this, this, this was going to ask you, yeah, I just wanted to ask you as well today. What what's stronger, the mind or the body? Mind all day long. I don't even think about that. <laughs> have to think about it. Well. But That's can you explain brain. where though? The mind leads the body. Mm. Um, so a lot of what I see in terms of my way that I see life, it, for me, life or fighting equates to life, and I get so many of my thought processes around life from fighting. So in a, in a fight game, fighting is ten percent uh, physical. And 90% physical, sorry, 10% <laughs> physical, 90% mental. Mm. And if you think about how much training that we put in, training six days a week, you know, five, six hours a day, and that's still only 10% of the fight, whereas the, the, the mindset training should be 90% because the mind is that much stronger and more powerful. The mind can make the body do so much more. Mm. You know, the body has limitations. The body, body has physical limitations, but the mind is endless. So if you think to yourself, there's a moment where, I might say to you, okay, we're doing burpees. Just for, uh, just for example, you might get to 30 burpees and start to feel tired, yeah? But as you're thinking tired, mindset, as you think tired, your body's going to start to become more tired. If While you're doing those burpees and you're, you know, you're, you're tired and you're feeling like you're dying, I then speak to you and mention one of your motivating factors. It might be a family member who's ill, who wants you to do this because you might be able to make a change for them or find some money to, that's going to actually help them. Like with Deontay Wilder, his motivating factor is his daughter. She's got um, spina bifida. Mm. And he said to himself, he's, he's going to make sure he makes enough money from fighting to, to be able to look after her. So there might be times when his body gives up. Physically, he can't do anymore. He can't run anymore. He can't lift anymore. But once he gets that mindset switched mm. on to, there's a reason why I'm doing this. I have to do this because of X, Y, and Z. His mind will drive his body to do more. So when we're in training, as I said, we're going back to the burpees, and someone said, oh, I can't do any more. Oh, I'm finished. I can't do any more. What is it I normally do? I don't know if you remember. I'll say to this person, okay, you stand up. You jump on his back. And they'll jump on his back. And I'll say, now you're holding him. Now piggyback that person up and down the room. And you'll see them struggle because they either don't want to show up or they don't want to collapse. They'll walk all the way across the room and then all the way back with someone on their back. And I'll stop, get off now. Okay, 30 seconds ago, you thought you was dead. You thought you couldn't do any more. But you've now carried somebody the same weight as yourself up the room and back. What has yeah. that shown you? Once you put your mind to something, there's more in the tank. Your body thought to you, or your body was telling you, I can't do any more. And you was telling your body, we're at our limits. But once you reprogrammed your mind and focused on something that's not pain, it's not tiredness, you focus your something on a goal and focus just on that goal 100%, you manage to get all the way up to the room and all the way back. Mm. So that shows me right there and then, the mind is stronger than the body. Mm. You know, the body, the body will give up very easily. The mind won't. Yeah, that's what I experienced this morning. I was there and I was just like, you know what? Like, it was a mindset thing. I didn't even care. I didn't even care about how I felt physically. I was like, you know, I'm here. I'm committed to it and I'm just going to put in my, whatever mm. I can give, I'm just going to give it, man. Yeah. And just break it. Cool, so, so we have some limitations anyways on the podcast, which is we can only film up to like 40-something minutes. Okay. So I'm going to start wrapping it up. Cool. Um, is there anything you want to promote um, to the audience? You've got about like 50 to 100 frequent viewers, so okay. um, it's not huge, but it's something. Um, no, 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 promotion. We're all, we're all, everyone's trying to build and grow. Um, what, who am I promoting? Well, promote myself, Daniel Sam, Team Daniel Sam, the fight team. Daniel Sam Fitness at Daniel the Warrior Sam on Instagram. Um, we're training. We've got the guys that are out training, fighting, and competing. We're at Wild Fighters Gym. We can plug that at Wild Fighters Gym. And we've got guys like Kingsley Crawford. We've got Afina. We've got Dylan the Good Fella, <laughs> Sabir, um, Hasib. We've got my Mrs. T Titch, who's doing her personal training as well. Give her a shout out. Um, my son Yashua, who's an up and coming fighter who wants to get on and, and move forward. Um, apologies for any of the other guys who are in the team that I haven't shouted out. But then also, it's a shout out to everyone who wants to do something, who's got a dream that they want to do something in life. Mm. It's, you know, it's to stay on that dream and just push push on. There's going to be times when it's hard. There's going to be times, as we spoke about, when you don't want to do it. But that's when you've got to focus on 
why you're doing it. Mm. You know, that's got to be your motivating factor. You've got to go back down to, to the why of, of what you're doing. So my shout out is to everyone mm. who's trying to do something, who's struggling to do it, who's succeeding in doing it, just to keep going. Mm. Keep real focusing on why you're doing it and just keep doing it. That's and all I can say. Do, do you know what's mad? Yeah, even on that bit of like, <clears throat> sometimes like, just not wanting to do stuff yeah recently as well i've been i've been exploring that a bit and mm-hmm. i've just been going oh what like what's what's going on there with the fact that i want to do something and what's the learning i can take from that and then switch yeah. it around because sometimes a lot of the time when people don't want to do something there's something going on there it's mm-hmm. not just like out of nowhere like suddenly i don't want to do this because every single person wants to be successful but some people don't want to work out mm-hmm. what the what the what the kind of what the process is to get there or sometimes people avoid it and i think it comes from a little bit of fear and stuff anyways yeah so you kind of mentioned it a bit, but the last thing to check out with you is, I'm not going to say if, because I was going to use the word if, when you're going to have 7.8 billion people listening to you, mm-hmm. what are you going to tell them? When 7.8 billion people are listening to me, I'm going to tell them exactly what I said to you. Focus on, focus on themselves. Focus on what they want to do with life, what makes them happy. And don't listen to the people on the outside that either won't do it, can't do it, or are trying to talk them out of doing it. Because everyone's got a goal. Everyone's got something that they want to do, which may be different to the other person. And everybody's got something that they're more skilled at than anyone on the planet. Like, for example, there's something that Aladdin can do better than me. And it doesn't matter how much I practice and try, there's something he's naturally talented at. And Mm. if he works at, he can make a living from it. He can change his life. He can make him happy. That's the same with everybody. Find out what your purpose and what your attribute is in life because everybody has one every species of animal has something that they can do better than the than others even if it's for survival you'll get some animals that can change their skin they can change their spots they can change their color some can run faster some have got poison some can jump high run you know climb trees everybody's got something that they can do better than everyone else and if they find out what that is and master it do it putting in you know the ten thousand hours which is what they say is to to master any kind of skill they can use that to change their change their life, help their family and make money. Mm. Everybody. So that's what I would say. Even out of seven point eight billion people, there's seven point eight billion talents out there that can be harnessed and we can all use. We can all benefit that. from. I love that. On that note, thanks for coming. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been my pleasure to have you here. And also this is this is my gold. Like this is something I'm gonna have forever and I can look back on it. And yeah, this is good, man. This is good. I'm yeah. glad to be part of it. Shout out to and Leo. Yeah. And when I've got kids as well, I'm gonna show my kids like this is Daniel, the guy that I spent <laughs> 10, 11 years, even more years than that, anyways, because obviously the future, there's still a future there. But of course, man. Of course. yeah. Shout out to Aladdin, shout out to little Lily over there. <laughs> all well and good. It's all good. It's all good. Alright, cool, love, bro. Yeah.